simplify a trigonometric, trigonometric expression into a single trig function. So we're going to be using our identities to do this. So if you're in my classes, I'm going to be using the abbreviations we use in class, so that way we're preparing for our trig identities unit, which is rapidly approaching. Okay, so in the first stage, we have a cosecant of x. The cosecant is the same as the 1 over the sine of x. The 1 over sine of x. And my justification for that, based on our trigonometric identities, was a reciprocal identity. So our abbreviations in my class are RID for the reciprocal identity. Now, tangent. Tangent is sine of x over cosine of x. Cosine of x, sine of x over cosine of x. This is called a quotient identity. So in my class, again, we're going to use an abbreviation called the QID for the quotient identity. Okay, now that we have 1 over sine times sine over cosine, we can reduce the sine over sine x, which is both in the top and in the bottom. So that means we're going to get a result here that only has a 1 in the top and a cosine of x in the bottom. And to move from that stage to that stage in our class, we'll just generally call this an algebraic step. We've done some algebra. Okay, now 1 over cosine of x is another trig function. 1 over cosine is the same as the secant of x. So that's actually going to be our final answer here. This is a simple single trigonometric function and the justification for being able to say that 1 over cosine is secant is again a reciprocation. So this is an RID, a reciprocal identity. Okay, why don't you try this next problem on your own? Try to simplify as far as you can tangent of x divided by sine of x. Now there is an answer I'm going to get to. There might be alternative answers uh, in the sense that they could simplify into each other. So I'm not telling you where you're going to get. You're going to do your best to get to what you think you want to stop at. Okay, so assuming you pause the video and tried this on your own, let's do it together. We have a tangent of x over a sine of x. So in the tangent of x, I'm going to change that into a sine of x over cosine of x. And I'm going to keep my denominator the same. I'm going to keep that as a sine of x. So all I changed was the numerator from tangent into sine over cosine. And changing a trig function into a quotient is a quotient identity. This is true by the quotient identity for tangent. Okay, in the next stage, I'm going to interpret that sine x as a sine x over 1, so that way I can change this into a sine x over cosine of x, multiplied by the reciprocal of sine x over 1, which is a 1 over a sine of x. So dividing by a fraction is like multiplying by a, uh, the reciprocal. So that's, I guess, technically a, uh, arithmetic, but in our class. We'll just call this an algebraic step again. I did a little bit of algebra. Okay, in this form, it looks like the sine of x's will cancel nicely for me, which will leave me at the end with on the top just a 1, and on the bottom a cosine of x. So again, this was a simplification stage via algebra, because all I did was reduce the top to the bottom. And then 1 over cosine of x is equal to secant of x. So that's our final answer, and the justification for changing that 1 over cosine of x into secant of x is a reciprocal identity. So uh, coincidentally, both, both problems came out to be a secant of x. This will not always happen. Sometimes we will get other trig functions, but both of these ones happen to be secant of x.